Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys some updates to the con or sorry, the ritualist build. Um, so yesterday we basically finished through ultimate on the vanilla playthrough, meaning we cleared like without the expansion content. Actually, we also did Malmouth. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this character and show you guys our progress. Now in the video guide before that I showed you, I think we were in elite difficulty. So let me go ahead and show you what progress, pro progression that we have done. So first thing I wanna start, let's start with the basics. So the buffs that I'm using, I've got Aether Ward and Void Ward that's granted via components in my dagger and my offhand. They're basic components you can go make at the blacksmith up there. We've got Spectral Binding, which comes from our Necromancer right here. We have Mogdrogan's Pact, which is only one point. The blue means it's being plused from a skill. Mogdrogan's Pact doesn't really do much for us. It's good early game, but we're using it for the passives attached to it, Heart of the Wild for the bonus health, poison and bleed reduction, and Oak Skin, which gives us Pierce Res, uh, Armor and Health Regen. And then I also have Master of Death, which normally I don't really think you would use until more so end game. The reason I'm using Master of Death over Harbinger of Souls is because Harbinger of Souls is really just increased vitality damage, which is okay, but there's so many sources of increased vitality damage. And I wanted to go crit because I think crit is much better. Um, so I didn't actually get Master of Death until I started getting more uh, purple pieces because the purple pieces that you get. Uh, do often come with a lot of offensive ability compared to the random stuff that you're getting and just more so in general I would say like the 84 plus items come with a lot more offensive ability on them um, And then the last buff I have is devouring darkness Which comes from my chest piece that I'm currently using as for my stats. I would say I made a mistake early game I was dumping a lot into spirit. I would probably recommend for you guys to go like full physique um, and the reason why I say full physique still you're probably gonna respec endgame But again, you know, you're always gonna respec and grim dawn for optimization Physique allows you to wear the gear that often has these weird hybrid stats That is a significant upgrade because a lot of gear that requires high physique is gonna have built-in physical resistance Physical resistance is a very scarce resistance in grim dawn until you start getting like a lot of the endgame pieces and then Probably the leftover points will respect into cunning because cunning gives us offensive ability. Now, we're currently running with a total of, at the moment, without any buffs or anything, where is my offensive ability? I thought it was, in, is it tab one maybe? Oh, here it is. We're 2400 offensive ability. I've done some slight respecting to the devotion tree uh, to do this. So I showed you guys what the end game goal was gonna be in the previous video. So just to clarify what I've changed, I ended up dropping Lotus and I dropped Scorpion, uh, mainly because I'm running with someone who does minus defensive ability and because on my gear I have something that's minus defensive ability. So Scorpion didn't pose too much of a bonus. Also, Scorpion requires you to always be melee because the proc from Scorpion seems to only proc off of me even if I'm using it on a skill or a totem. It seems to always go off of my character. So I dropped that, those two. I ended up getting Lantern. Since we're using a offhand for a set, we're using not a shield, but a caster offhand, and we're using a dagger, like even if we replace one or the other, we can still use the Lantern benefit. So Lantern mainly gives us offensive ability, defensive ability, crit damage, offensive ability, 50% all damage, reduced, it reduced entrapment duration, which is actually like just straight hard CC. It's like things that just like root you in place, which is really good to not have this happen. And then the last point is just basic. It's nothing really that good. Um, one thing to note, if it really matters to you, since we're not using Master of Death anymore, we do lose attack speed and cast speed, and that gives us attack speed and cast speed. But I don't think attack and cast speed really do anything for us, except like I know it makes this feel better with our right click, which is Devouring Swarm. Um, and then the last thing we picked up is I ended up going back into Hawk. Uh, and the reason why is we get 15 offensive ability, 8% crit damage, along with the crit damage we get from here, which is 5%. And then we get 3% offensive ability, which stacks real nicely with the percent offensive ability from the new bonus we have. And if you look over here at Hungering Void, we can now make use of this delicious 32% crit damage since we have a lot more offensive ability. Um, so yeah, let me just go ahead and glance over my gear for you guys. The main importance of this 
This weapon is the MI. It's a monster and frequent. This weapon will carry you throughout the whole game. You need to Google, um, basically, um, to find out what monsters drop this. It's the Bone Spike weapon. So mine has 216% vitality, plus the Ravenous Earth, plus the Devouring Swarm, uh, minus Recharge to Ravenous Earth, and plus Duration of Ravenous Earth. And then the metal that I have, which you can farm in the Ugdenbog place in the expansion, the previous expansion, gives the minus uh, skill recharge to Ravenous Earth. So if you look at my Ravenous Earth, when I cast it, it's like, it's already back up, right? And this is going to be our main damage source. In fact, it's so strong, I may respec all of Storm Totem and Corrupted Storm. And the last thing, I did put an extra 10 points in the Shaman just to get the bonus stats because I have to respec my character for more stats. But... With that being said, let me show you guys some content. So I'm not going to do anything too crazy. I'm just going to go to like the last boss over here. I don't even know like how good my damage is because character's still pretty, you know, not that strong yet. Um, and then another kind of important thing is I'm using Chains of Orion in my chest piece. It gives flat offensive ability. You can't really see it. I guess I can remove the webcam for a second. It gives flat offensive ability, percent offensive ability, and that entrapment duration reduction that I have. Remember, if you feel like you're missing information, make sure you check out the previous build guides of this character. It will clarify and explain a lot about the build. Um, a large source of our damage also is coming from our gloves, which give Doom Bolt on crit. And another large source of our damage comes from our ring which gives doom bolt when we're hit and considering the type of build we're playing we get hit all the time i may also consider specking into drain essence and necromancer i have no clue how good the skill is going to be but it would be nice to get uh to get more sustain on those bursty single target packs i have great sustain in areas like when you know with great mob density but i'm basically trying to aim for better sustain um on just single target or more, more, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? More, I don't know, I'm not sure. Uh, also, I'm gonna start going into Wendigo Totem since uh, Wendigo Totem gives us a nice amount of sustain for basically what I was asking for. I just never really tried Drain Essence. So I guess that's kind of why I'm curious to use it. So you can see here, this dude has pretty big defensive ability, and you can tell because I can't really crit him very much. The other guys I was critting a lot more. So we still need to get a bit more offensive ability to be able to crit these higher on targets. That's some mean poison and acid. Our resistances are doing all right. They're not that good yet. Um, thankfully, we don't have any components, not components, we don't have any augments. Yeah, augments on our armor pieces yet uh, since I don't have max rep with anyone since you know this is a brand new account so today is definitely most likely going to be a partial rep farming day since getting those uh, resistances to max makes a huge difference obviously seeing as you know every single resistance you gain is reduction towards that type of damage Am I going the wrong way? No, 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 I'm going the right way. Yeah, 55 is max, it's still the same as before. That's the wrong way though. Okay, we got this way and then it's boss after, right? Yeah, boss is like right over there after we kill the little turd defender. Feels turd defender, man. I really do feel like my damage is fine because considering I'm going to still get like so much extra vitality increase from gear in general, I'm really just looking to scale my offensive ability now at this point. I think that every point of offensive ability I can get 
will start making a big difference due to the fact of our, our crit damage scaling already. Our crit damage is pretty nice. And then the next goal, I think our HP is looking good. I can probably get to like 25 to 27k HP. But what's more important than HP right now is definitely capping our resistances. Um, and on top of capping resistances, it's going to be physical resistance as a stat. Oh. Ho, 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 ho. You know, this ring actually is better than our current ring for Ravenous Earth. The problem with this ring is I would need to get Ravenous Earth maxed before using this. Because this has a huge, a decent vitality roll, vitality res, percent health. The percent health counters the flat health. We lose offensive ability. We gain maximum vitality res and we have a chance of having 100% uptime because it's 8 second duration, 3 second recharge, at additional minus vitality res. And it's minus attack speed and cast speed, so that's just overall a very good ring to have. Uh, a tip with inventory management to help you guys out, what I like to do is items that I want to keep for the future. What I do is, is I find them, where, where was it, this one here? Yeah, I find them here, and I just put them all the way in my back tabs here. And I keep those last two tabs for important gear upgrades and consumables that I'm always having to use. Although you could put them in the bank, but you just find them all the time from drops. So this helps me organize them. And then basically tabs one, two, and three here for the most part are just all vendor sell. So it's easy. So that way, if you need to make bits, you can just pick up all the greens and blues and you know exactly where they're going. And then you just go to the vendor and click, 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 click. So. Our Doombolt has top-ended someone, I don't know how or who or when, but our highest hit with Doombo has been 254k. I still don't know how that happened. I'm guessing it must have been a really high health target and then we rolled like super high on the, the health drain and then it crit. I, I'm not really sure, but Doombo has been real mad, which is pretty funny considering we're not an occultist, but we use a lot of Doombo. Okay, buddy, you need to chill out. That skill's not ready. Ravenous Earth is a skill that shotguns. If you guys don't know what shotgun means, it basically means that you see how it shoots out a bunch of projectiles? If a target is standing on top of it, they will receive all of the projectile hits. Okay, and this should be the last boss. I haven't tried to solo this guy yet, so let's see how this turns out. Definitely have to be careful of that because we're not capped poison and acid res. Put this down here. Ravenous Earth is really good at taking down stationary targets like that, since the bigger the hitbox, the easier it is to hit them multiple times. Plus one to all skills in Shaman. It's pretty bad though. Doo -doo -doo -doo.
plus two to all skills in Necromancer, plus one to all skills in Shaman, Vitality Wave, chance on attack to heal, 300% Vitality? That's, that's too bad it's a fucking two-hander. Too bad it's a two-hander, dude. Hey, Mr. Bobbington? Would you like a piece of gear that gives 100 cunning, percent offensive ability, fizz resist, 7% health, and plus 2 to Albrich's Aether Ray? My buddy's playing Albrich's Aether Ray. It's a pretty fucking good skill. Okay, and then to just go over my gear really fast, if you guys want to see, and that's pretty much going to conclude the video. Um, this is the dagger I told you guys about. Pretty fucking strong. Uh, our current chest piece, again, we don't really have any best in slot what I'm aiming for. I don't really remember. It's It's My been, a, it's been a while God. since I've played Grim Dawn again, so trying to definitely um, get back to where I was, I guess you could say. When you're gearing your character, I mean, I would probably say the most important stats to go for is plus the level, since plus the level is what's going to scale you the furthest with your skills, specifically plus to Ravenous Earth. If you're early game and you're leveling, you can go for plus to... Uh, uh, what is this totem called? Uh, storm totem. Make sure that if you're doing storm totem, you get the corrupted storm. Uh, I'm using a sanctuary, not for any specific reason, but I mean, it's defensive. It's not bad. It gives us good health. It gives us minus physique requirement for armor, which helps getting into that early end game gear. A lot of what I was saying earlier, um, not even using an offensive relic yet, really. Bone Weave Girdle is pretty cool. It gives us the nice offensive ability, health, and mainly the uh, Wave of Souls chance on hit to basically heal a ton. Uh, definitely need to refarm for a new badge, but this badge is super good. Uh, these boots are pretty okay. I've got the Rift Warp Grasp gloves. I actually have the upgraded version of them, but the upgraded version of these gloves, for some reason, loses the Doom Bolt on crit. So I'm not using them, which kind of sucks because... I would like to use the upgraded version, but man, the Doom Bolt on crate is fucking nice right now. Uh, these are real bad. These are Venom Tongue shit mantles. There's not much of a benefit to them. Um, I just don't really have that good of, like, uh, I don't have that good of shoulders. But there is one benefit to them, and the fact is, is they give a little bit of okay stats. Venom Lash actually reduces defensive ability, which is really good because we drop Scorpion. And we get plus three to decay and decay is actually this which in total now reduces enemy damage by 27 percent and guess what all it takes is one of these to hit a target to reduce their damage so everything always has its damage reduced pretty fucking cool um and then going up i actually ended up getting this pretty luckily from the Ugdenbog place uh, main thing to look for cdr plus the ravenous earth ideally if we can get some health on there we would look for it, no health. Um, ended up getting Signet of the Fallen. Again, a lot of the gear I have is offensive ability related. You should not be getting offensive ability that early. I I mean, people, a lot of people disagree with me there from what I've heard from the Grim Dawn -like community, but offensive ability, in my opinion, does not feel good until you can scale it with percentages. If you're just stacking flat offensive ability on a caster that doesn't have a lot in general, you're just not really making much out of it until you can get that percentage. Once that percentage kicks in, you're golden. If you want an example, I was at 1700 offensive ability yesterday, clearing through ultimate, had no problems. Respect to 2400, sure my damage went up by double, but I would not have been able to get that huge spec up until I started getting the percentage values. Like for example, the 2% uh, I told you about on the chains of Ulrion, um, going over here and getting Hawk for another 3%, uh, coming over here to getting the flat one off of uh, the Lantern, and then I forgot the, oh yeah, switching from, uh, switching from, what was it, Master of Death to the, uh, uh, sorry, switching from Harbinger of Souls to Master of Death. That's pretty much where a lot of the offensive ability stacking came in. And then of course, as I was telling you guys, when you start getting the higher legendaries, you'll get more offensive ability from there. Anyway though, that's pretty much going to conclude the character. Uh, remember, you can play this as any combination of like Shaman, Necro, and Occultist. Not really sure which one is the best. It's kind of up to you at that point. But hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, if you have any questions, you can always tune into the stream at twitch.tv slash pox. And feel free to ask me there.
So take care. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. And I'll see you boys all tomorrow.